بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي الله حبيت في الله continuing on our studies of the treaties obstacles that prevent one from making repentance we reach the portion of the treaties where Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says reasons why one underrates his sins or at least this is the title of this portion of the treaties reasons why one underrates his sins so these are reasons why a person may belittle their sins and think their sins are small first weak understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness in his power and his lordship so this means that this is weak rububiyya a person is weak in tawheed or rububiyya in their understanding of tawheed or rububiyya the second thing is being heedless of Allah's punishment so that they are careless with regards to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they're unaware of the punishment of Allah uh, A third reason is that a person is weak in Iman and lacks the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa, habitifillah, we've said on countless occasions as the Salaf used to uh, describe, meaning uh, that a person enjoins those commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to do and they avoid the prohibitions and that's taqwa Allah azza wa jal and that is a waqaya that is putting a a uh, like a shield between a, a believer and their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a shield between the believer and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by having taqwa that's what taqwa is and it is enjoining the commands, doing the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal, adhering to them, and avoiding his prohibitions. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq and increase our taqwa, ameen. Another reason why a person underrates his or her sins is having a sick and corrupt heart. Having sickness in the heart. And this is when a person is more inclined towards evil than goodness that their heart, that there's a sickness and a disease, that they love sinfulness and ma'asi. They love talking about it. They love indulging in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and help us on me. And the last uh, reason that he mentioned is forgetting one's sins and a lack of toba by being forgetful and negligent regarding sinfulness and being uh, uh, refusing to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asari said, true tawbah, rahmatullah true tawbah, repentance, is not to forget your sins. One of the ways that lead to destruction is that one forgets his sins. Bilal ibn Sa'id, rahmatullah said, don't look at any sin as being insignificant. Rather, look at the greatness of the one you disobeyed. And this is the difference between a true believer and a weak sinner. The true believer looks at his sins as though they were a mountain about to fall upon him. But the weak sinner looks at his sins as though they were a fly on his nose and he just waves them off with his hand. So if the slave underrates his sins and belittles them, he will never have remorse over what sins he commits. For a person to recognize the greatness of his sin, three things must occur. Firstly, uh, that he has to know the greatness of the affair. Second, knowing the greatness of the one who lays down the order and who he is disobeying. And lastly, belief one being held belief in that one is going to be held accountable for what he or she does, whether good or bad. So this is imperative and it shows us the importance of ilm and fiqh fi deen. The Prophet wasallam said, Man yiridallahu bi khayran yafaqahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. Part of that fiqh fi deen, ahabbat fi Allah, is knowing the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing those things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you from. 
and knowing his commandments, knowing what he's commanded you from. That's ilm, that's knowledge. That's knowledge of Islam. And that's going to be, that's the tariq and the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. That's how the salaf of this ummah, they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, they were the most God-conscious and God-fearful community. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. Unlike those ahl bid'ah and people who, who claim otherwise, those people who speak about the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, curse the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, make takfir sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. So we're going to continue to, 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 to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he be he is pleased with them. Radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in. Walau kari al kafirun. Even if the disbelievers hate it. Walau kari al ahla bid'ah. Even if ahla bid'ah hates it. Because they were the best of this ummah. They feared Allah the most. The Prophet sallallahu was the most God fearing. And, and the NBA. Alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. Jesus alayhi salatu wa salam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam. Moses sallallahu alayhi wa salam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. All the NBA. We love them all. And they were the best of mankind. And they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. And they are an example for us. As Shaykh al-Islam said, he said, for a person to recognize the greatness of a sin, there are three things. He mentioned three things. He said, first, it's, it's having knowledge of the affair, meaning that you have ilm about your deen. You have ilm and knowledge about what is sinful, what is halal, what is haram. If you don't have ilm and knowledge of Islam, you're not going to know what is uh, an obligation upon you, and you're not going to know what's a prohibition. So that shows us again the importance of ilm. Uh, number two is knowing the greatness of the one who lays down the order and who he's obeying. So that means knowing the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything, hears everything. He subhanahu wa ta'ala created all this beauty. He created you. The... the, 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 the the, uh, the amazing creation of just your body, all the things that are going on with inside of you to, to make you work, to make you be a functional human being, to make you be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the things that, the way the blood pumps to your heart, the way that uh, your, your muscles are defined, the way that your eyes are able to see, the way your tongue is able to speak, uh, the, the way speech is, is developed. Subhanallah. So by knowing the greatness of your Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this also will help you know uh, the greatness of sinfulness. It's by recognizing that, saying, subhanallah, the one who gave me the ability to speak, subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you reflect upon that, and you reflect upon this action of being able to speak, then you'll be less inclined to use that speech for sinfulness, to backbite people, to curse people, to make takfir of people without the right to do so, to do all those things and those harmful things with the tongue. Likewise with the eyes, if you realize the greatness of the eyes and that you realize the one subhanahu wa ta'ala who created you, he hears and sees everything and he gave you the function, the, the ability of, of sight, then the more you reflect upon that, the more you'll be weary to commit sin with your eyes. The third thing he mentioned is also uh, related to knowledge and iman, and is knowing and being that you're go you'll be held accountable for what you do in this life. Knowing that there is a, a, a yom al qiyamah, knowing that there is a ghaib, believing in the ghaib. This is the sifat to mu'minin. These are the uh, the characteristics of the believer: is that they know. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. They believe in Allah. We've never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've never seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We read books about him. We live, maybe you're blessed to live in the lands where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived. But we don't see him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we see the manifestation of his sunnah, alayhi salatu wa sallam. And we believe in the ghaib. We've never seen the angels. We believe in them. We've never seen the jinn. We believe that jinn exists. We believe in the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the characteristics of a believer. And this will help you. The more you believe in the ghaib, the more you'll be fearful of sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem alif la mim thalik al kitab al rayb fi hudin lil muttaqeen alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaibi wa yuqimuna salat wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
uh, in the Shahid of mentioned in this verse. He says, Those who believe in the ghaib, those who believe in the unseen. I've, I haven't seen the jinn. Some people have, have seen jinn, though. But I've never personally, I've seen people uh, perhaps on, once or twice in my life who are possessed that I were, were being exercised or they uh, uh, were known to be possessed by jinn. But I haven't really experienced a thing where I've seen a person float or, or any of those things or or where I was truly aware uh, of their presence. But many people have. And that's knowledge of the unseen as well. We, we don't, you may not see jinn on a, uh, or be aware that you, you're seeing jinn on a, on, a, on a regular basis. But you believe in that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has, has uh, described them in the Quran. And through the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu we, we have knowledge about the jinn. So we believe in it. The day of judgment, it hasn't come to us, but we believe in it. That's one of the pillars of Iman. And tu'mina billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhir wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. Almost all of that, almost all of those pillars of Iman have to do with the ilm al-ghayb. You know, the un knowledge of the unseen. We've never seen Allah, we believe in Him. And we believe in his commandments. We've never seen the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any of the Prophets Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. But we believe that they existed. Those that are mentioned in the Quran and those that are that are, are not mentioned with details, that are mentioned in, in, in general. From the authentic Sunnah. We believe. And we believe in the books. We, we, we only have what's left of, of many of the books that came before. We only have bits and pieces of what uh, Moses alayhi salatu wasalam, came with, what Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, came with, what David alayhi salatu wasalam, what they came with. But we believe. The Quran is the only thing that we have with us. But we believe in those other books as well. That's Ilm al ghayb And we believe in, that, in the angels. And we believe in the Day of Judgment. So by having knowledge in the Day of Judgment, and that you will one day return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we came and from Him to, to Him we will return. He created us and we'll return to Him. We'll be held accountable for what we did in this life. By having that knowledge, and again that's ilm. Remember the importance of knowledge. That's what talab al-ilm is. As the Salaf used to say, Talib al ilm Talib al-Jannah, that seeking knowledge is seeking Jannah, it's seeking paradise. <clears throat> that, that shows you the, when a, per, a person should have pure intention for seeking knowledge. This is, this is ilm. To strengthen your Iman in, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To help you obey His commandments and avoid His prohibitions. To avoid sin. And in order to recognize sin, the shahid here is that you need ilm. You need ilm. You need ilm and nafiyah, you need beneficial knowledge. So you know and you can purify and, and have an ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll stop there and continue on in our next sitting. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.